So, that is... get to go into all the new stuff that I prepared for just this year. Each time I prepare this panel, it takes me generally about a hundred hours worth of work to do it. This is my second biggest hobby, only second to World of Warcraft. Uh, so yeah, you can tell where this ranks for me. Uh, I have three new segments this year, and to start off with the new ones, this is the most requested thing I've ever gotten. How the hell does a Pokeball work? <laughs> I didn't want to touch this for a long time because, well, I've seen so many rationalizations and there's different ways it's supposed to work depending on the manga or the TV show. And finally, I just decided, you know, I'm going to pick one way, use one way to constrain my variables and just hope that I don't have anyone that nitpicks too much. So first off, what is a Pokeball? Well, it does something to the Pokemon where it makes them go all glowy. <laughs> And then they turn into this little beamy thing. And then they go inside it. That's what she said. <laughs> so, there's two things that seem to happen. First off, the Pokemon no longer has a cohesive form. He's not all together. He was somehow disassembled at the very least. Kind of like a Star Trek transporter, maybe? So, who knows, but... At least with the Star Trek transporter, you end up somewhere else whole. Uh, Pokeballs are kind of too small for that, so maybe they just kind of broke them down into a pile of atoms that are sitting there, and they'll release it later and put it back together uh, somehow. But if that were the case, then you would still have conservation of mass, and I don't see Ash carrying around a 500-pound Pokeball with an onyx in it. <laughs> it doesn't seem to work too well for me. So that means I can only really come up with two scenarios here. The first one was disassociating them, breaking it into constituent atoms, piling it all up inside the Pokeball. This satisfies our first condition that it no longer has a cohesive form to turn into a linear beam of some sort, but it doesn't fit with the whole it would still have mass thing. So the only way I think this could work is if instead of leaving it as mass, we converted it to energy. This would work. It's no longer mass and it's no longer cohesive. So, sounds like it would work pretty well. So let's see what would happen there. Uh, let's pick some consoles oh, just God. to start off. <laughs> I started with the Pikachu just because it's so quintessential. Uh, according to the Pokedex, Pikachu has a mass of 5.9 kilograms, and I'm going to be working in metric here. Uh, for those of you that don't speak metric, a uh, kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Okay, so Pikachu is about 11, 12 pounds. A radius of Pokeball, well, that one switches to. It starts off this big, and then it shrinks on his belt to this big. Okay, I'm not even going to touch that one, but it's <laughs> somewhere about two inches on average. And the volume of Pokeball, if we're going to say it's a perfect sphere, four-thirds pi r cubed, so we have 5.2 times 10 to the negative fourth meters cubed. And I think I lost something in there. Yep. Let's convert this to energy using the famous equals mc squared. So we have mass of Pikachu. We can plug that one in, multiply it by the speed of light squared, and Pikachu is worth 1.77 times 10 to the 9th joules. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Hooray. <laughs> I give you numbers, they mean nothing. What am I? Are, are Network television? <laughs> What's that? Are you assuming perfect efficiency? Yes, I am assuming perfect efficiency until I make another couple steps, and then you'll see what's going to happen to that efficiency. <laughs> so, we have this energy, and it's going to have to go somewhere. And to show you where it's going to go, and what this actually means, what's going to happen is all that energy gets released into the air that's in the Pokeball and the Pokeball itself. So let's see what would just about happen with that. In an average cubic meter of air, you have about 3.4 times 10 to the 25th molecules. This is uh, nitrogen, oxygen, a bit of argon, and all sorts of things like that. So if we kind of divide it out by the volume in a Pokeball, we would get that there are 1.8 times 10 to the 22 molecules of air in a Pokeball. So for those of you that don't speak scientific notation, this is a 1.8 followed by 21 zeros. That's a really big number, but keep in mind that each molecule is really, really small and has a very small mass, which means that it can take a lot of energy and be able to go extremely fast with actually just a very small amount. 
So let's divide up the amount of energy we just had by the uh, number of molecules in there and see how much average energy we would just have given it. And that's going to be a change in temperature that we get. And the relationship between this is E to the three halves, or E equals three halves kT. So we can plug in the amount of energy. This constant K is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd. I left off the dimensions just because I was being lazy. And we can solve that for T. So T is going to be 2 point, oh or T equals 2 E divided by 10 which means our change in temperature is going to be 4.8 times 10 to the 9th Kelvin, which for those of you that don't speak Kelvin, is 8.6 billion <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> A bit longer than a midday sun. But still, I think this lacks good context, because how often do we deal with billions of degrees? Not often. So let's try to put this in context. What's something that's nice and hot? Blowtorch. 2.3 times 10 to the third. Uh, still several orders of magnitude off. Let's get hotter. Surface of the sun. 5.7 times 10 to the third. Not there yet. Temperature of an atomic bomb. 3 times 10 to the fifth. The core of the sun, where it's hot enough to undergo hydrogen fusion. 1.6 times 10 to the seventh. The temperature necessary to fuse oxygen. 1.5 times 10 to the ninth. The temperature of a supernova. 1 times 10 to the eleventh. Where does Pikachu in a Pokeball fit? Now notice what this comes right after, the temperature necessary to fuse oxygen, and what is one of the main constituents of our atmosphere? Oxygen. You capture a Pikachu, you destroy the world. <laughs> there would be no ash, there would be vaporized. I don't have an animation for this one. It would be very bright, though. <laughs> so since we're on the topic of Pokemon, temperatures of the sun, let's talk about another Pokemon here. 